toxicologist, research associate, pathologist, forensic pathologist, forensic sounds technician, blood test for Alzheimer's disease. We're hearing about all of these cancer blood tests, trying to pick up biomarkers. Who is going to be able to do this kind of work? What kind of skills do we need in people who will enter the workforce to either develop these tests or to go work in forensics? And that brings us to our recurring segment, whose job is in any way, where we contemplate employability jobs and careers in science and innovation. The next article is from a career website portal called Indeed, based in Australia, 19 forensic careers to consider with salary and job info. This information is apparently accurate as of 20th of March, 2023. Biomedical scientist, private investigator or PI, forensic engineer, geneticist, forensic psychologist, analytical chemist, forensic chemist, policy advisor, forensic accountant, toxicologist, research associate, pathologist, forensic pathologist, forensic sounds technician, forensic investigator, evidence technician, forensic manager, expert witness, forensic specialist. Lots of people get into science because they're interested after watching all the murder mystery shows Shows, reading the novels by Kathy Wright, the idea that science can do a lot of good if it's applied towards the field of forensics. In Australia, forensics is not a huge boom at present in 2023. Right now, as of November 2023, there are 64 jobs all across Australia in the fields of forensics, spanning across any or all of those 19 forensic science jobs I just talked about. So 64 jobs in a whole country does not really give you the confidence that there's a lot of positions out there for someone who's exactly trained to do forensic work. If you want to get into any field, you want to think, I want to make as much money as possible. And the idea that you can be an expert witness to give forensic testimony and make a lot of money here apparently the average salary is $141,000 per year or you could be a forensic specialist you come in like bones you come in you're the person whose specialty is bones after collecting the evidence you make the test and you may also be the person involved in giving expert testimony in a criminal trial but to get to that point you cannot do three years of degree and go straight into become an expert specialist that gives testimony. The whole job market is biased against the young people. The jury pool will dismiss you as a Gen Z, as a millennial, that you don't know anything, and the people hiring will think you're too young. So aiming for this job as the first job out of your studies is not a particularly realistic or successful career development strategy. What I would instead do is focus on some of those jobs earlier on that maybe don't have forensics so front and center as part of their job description. For example, biomedical scientist. Your job is to understand how the body works. You could get into a research project investigating molecules in a certain part of the body. I know it doesn't have forensics in the title, but if you search for biomedical scientist as opposed to forensic scientist, there are way, way more jobs with that more generic title description than something very specifically in forensics, at least in my country of Australia. Maybe our crime rate isn't as high as other countries. While you're working as a biomedical scientist, again, not specifically in forensics, you're learning all the skills. You're learning the laboratory techniques, you're learning the manual dexterity to perform this kind of analysis, as well as being able to program those big robots because eventually everything might be automated, develop standard operating protocols for operating those robots, and you bind your time. You build up a CV of working in different areas of science. Maybe you start working with skin samples, you progress to brain samples, you progress to blood samples, and over time you build up this unimpeachable resume coupled with research publications, conference presentations, building your professional networks over time. And five, 10 years down the track, you then apply for that job with a very, very clear forensic label on it. You do need to play a long game if you want to be in forensics. Only the most senior scientists with a very clear specialty are given the opportunity to manage these forensic testing labs. You need to build up a career pathway filled with all of these different opportunities before eventually you will be the number one expert witness on blood in the country or the number one expert specialist in investigating bones or skin or hair follicles. That starts all the way from being a humble scientist, even if that does not have the glitz and glamour of being on TV. If you're interested in how scientists can develop soft skills that will move their career forward, you can find that episode linked here or in the show notes below. I'm Jack, hope to connect with you again in the next episode.